matter. Your speed is determinant on how well your leader leads. If your leader decides not to lead at all, you are going to be at a standstill. So all we need to do is have this issue of understanding that tasks and governance is related, is closely related. Okay. You generate it right, you apply it well, the people, will it will reflect. And that's what we saw in Qatar. And most of the time, I think even more, they pay more attention even to other indirect taxes. They even have what is called okay. syntax. I will mention one. We call that one syntax. It okay. says that as an SIM. SIM, yeah. Okay. You see that as much as possible, you have people that maybe take a little. I mean, there are some people from European countries. They are used to uh, alcoholic content. They are used to some type of this thing. Now, great, exactly. What they do is that they are secluded from the uh, uh, religious oriented uh, Qatars okay. in terms of this thing. But they are heavily tasked. What maybe you would have ordinarily spent a dollar for, you may end up spending close to like three or four because oh, the difference okay. will not be the tax. Oh. Now, what did they what did they use this tax money for? What is the same tax? They use it in strengthening their public health institutions. And they use it in strengthening their public educational system. Oh, so that okay. money is not mixed with other resources, the revenue. So they collect those taxes from you, they deploy it towards a specific purpose. Oh. We have a lot to learn. The only thing that maybe I will, if I have to put it this way, at this point, I have a right to express my frustration. <laughs> Seriously, the only frustrating part of it is the fact that. This is not like rocket science. We go there, we travel to so many places annually, regularly. We should now start learning how to actually connect our revenue sources to the application, specific use tasks. If we say we are getting this revenue, we are addressing to the beyond even the third one model we are talking about, mm -hmm. let's start looking at the areas of development we need to be addressing by ensuring that the revenue that comes from here is used to develop this place to the level where we have the comparative advantage. Beyond us talking history, some people will tell you there were some days, people from UK will come and be learning a, a medicine in University of Ibadan. Those were the days. Those were the days before people like me and you were born. But as of today, what do people do? They are running abroad to learn from them. And our universities are looking like what? These are areas we should start addressing. And the fact remains that we are resilient enough, we are determined enough, we are rugged enough to actually leapfrog into the future. I yeah. believe so much in that. Wow, wow. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, um, someone, um, before we forget, Mr. President, so can you address members? On um, because you alluded to it in passing that the issue between ICANN and CIT and the price of tax has uh, been resolved. That's an understanding. Um, so is that the finality? In public domain, and I can say this anytime, any day. And um, fortunately, we all belong to the same multiple professional bodies, as you said. This has been resolved last year, in okay. 2022. Okay. And it was uh, the resolution was actually midwife by uh, the Federal Island Revenue Service uh, chairman and the okay. three bodies, okay. the leadership of the three bodies, which is the president of the accountant, the president of Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, and my good self as the president of the Chartered of Taxation of Nigeria, actually sat at the table, agreed. And what we agreed was clear and simple and direct. Let us let those who are chartered accountant, national accountant, focus on the reporting and assurance aspect of the financial statement. Okay. Let okay. those of us who are tax professionals with practicing license okay. focus on the aspect that borders on the task competition and uh, the other issues. That was what was resolved, and their MOU related to that was done and signed and sealed. So if you won't see anybody from any of those institutions publicly talking about the fact that we have we don't have any issues anymore. Okay, okay, okay. okay. My Hakan friends are my brothers. And their brother, no, all we need to do is focus. I would, if as a task professional, if the only license I have is task practice, I will not try and make do in what the uh, uh, chartered accountant is talking about, about assurance. He's the one qualified to do audit assurance. 
is the one that is qualified for that purpose and certified accordingly. So that is the area. But when it comes to the aspect that borders on tasks, I am the one that is qualified to talk about all the issues, whether it is only reasonably exclusively. Uh, so all these are the areas I will focus on in order to ensure that what I'm going to present to the task administrator, we are speaking almost the same language, but only working from different perspectives. So the, the communication line will flow because I am a task professional. That is what I do in the morning. That is what I do in the afternoon. That is what I do in the evening. No dilution. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. It's a good one to know members and colleagues out there. Our president has clarified on the, on the amicable resolution of issue between Institute ICANN and ANAM with respect to tax practice. Um, someone asked me a question. That is, uh, is it Idonde? Uh, okay, some saying, um, that's the full name. You know, what is the current situation about the registration of CIT and UK districts? I don't know, is there anything like that in the works? Yes. The, the, the fact is that the current registration about CIT and UK districts, you know, you must understand one thing. It's easier for us to talk about CIT and Abeokuta district. Okay. CIT and Abuja district. We operate within the same uh, uh, constitutional framework and uh, okay. uh, company system. In the, in the UK context, which is one of the areas we are trying to, we observe that one or two things are required from the, uh, by the UK authorities that we need to also get our own legal advisors okay. to be able to advise us properly in order to push forward on that. Because you see, the the part is a member of the whole. Okay. If we are going to do anything, whether it is happening in Nigeria or not, the CIT brand name is at risk. So we all we need to do is just get that has person, and I can assure you, I think we've made significant progress. Okay. Even my incoming uh, uh, president is equally uh, interested in the way we were able to make progress on that. And as at the last time we had I had a conversation with them on Zoom. The only thing we needed to do is those aspects that borders on just those legal clarification. Okay. So that when we are not having that, we are talking about legal and the governance clarification. Okay. We are able that we can be able to know because if anything happened in CIT UK district, it's equally rub off negatively or positively yes. on CIT Nigeria. So, but I can assure you we've made progress. I can say for purpose of the person who has a question. We are at the level where I can confidently tell you we are 80% close to the CIT UK district wow. to make wow. it come into existence. Wow, thank you. Uh, someone asked me a question. I don't know that I want to answer that with the president. I uh, whether that will be taking away income from our practitioners. He's saying, uh, my president, can our institute issue a tax audit program or checklist? <laughs> okay. Thank you. We have the task practice and monitoring committee. Okay. Uh, and um, just like everything that has to do with progress, is equally evolving, and it's, we are making this thing there. Now, one of the essence of the whole thing is that, one, when you have issues that borders of standardization, okay. the whole essence of standardizing is for you to ensure that what I am applying in my own area yes. yeah, is equally the same in terms of standardizing. Okay. So okay. now, one of the challenges of tax is that a lot of it borders on you looking at the scenario that is applicable to the model you are trying to address. Okay. Or like maybe audit checklist. Okay, 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 okay. This will be because, peculiar. Yes, I may be looking at an Okoye's personal income tax profile in terms of this, and it may have more of an income than hand income. Okay. And you look at the other person. So there is a need to actually now sit down and come up with something that can be in the committee, which is presented under Dr. Koro, okay. who has been working on that. And they made some, uh, this in terms of a, a statement of transition standard. Okay. But beyond that, what you said has to do with the fact that it has to do with the practice. And that is the area they are actually delving on. You, if you recall, recently, They've been holding a lot of uh, interactive engagement with members and they're holding some Zoom related issue. Because the first thing they are dealing with currently is the aspect of building capacity. Because if we say we want to regulate tax, we shouldn't be regulating ignorantly. 
and our members require that capacity building to be able to know what are those things they need to do right. And that is the emphasis. I agree with you, it is doable, and we are doing it. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Um, let us look at it. Uh, okay, someone has been raised. Wow. Our uh, Mama Muradike Babin Uh So, um, team, can you please um, unmute and let uh, Mother come in and uh, make her contributions or comments? Thank you. Over to you, Mrs. Um, Babin Tashae, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, our president. Thank you, ma'am. I just want to support the president in making some comments. First of all, with regards to use of tax money, I will advise that CITN may be on a yearly basis, if it is possible, can do a free uh, maybe seminar, even to Mr. President and his uh, his uh, members, the legislators, the State House of Assembly, and also the local government. You cannot imagine that when they collect land use charge, they will take the money of one local government to go and spend somewhere else. And that is what the, our president is saying that you match income with the relevant expenditure. You cannot take money from uh, Joshua and you go and spend it on Jacob. Mm. So we have not seen many of us that we have been living in our local government. We haven't seen any differences, you know, whether it is a road, whether it is water, whether it's education in our vicinity. That is not good enough. Secondly, I will also want to advise our members because it is very, very important that we specialize. Taxation is a very, very wide, uh, wide um, discipline. Nobody can be an expert in every aspect of taxation. It's not possible. Uh -huh. So whether you want to be expert in personal income tax or um, company's income tax, or petroleum or capital gain tax. It's not that we will not have general knowledge. Yes, we should, but let us try and specialize so that when, so that we can combine our efforts as professionals. I may get a job on uh, petroleum, but because I know one of my colleagues, because we have a list of those who are experts, I will quickly call on that colleague and say, oh, there's a job. I know I'm not an expert, I know you are an expert on it. So we can connect. If we are specialists, we should be able to say so. Now, with regards to placing CITN members, we have to let the world know that we are specialists because most of our members, we first of all get one uh, level of education before we go into taxation, many of us. So we, when we say we are specialists, we should be above those who will ordinarily be uh, a professional on, on their own or on their merit. I think uh, we should solidify that, that as tax professional, we are specialists. We, we should be above any BSc degree holder. You know, because when I was in a position to certify that, I did, because they were going to place CITN member along the line of a BSc. And I said, no, CITN member is above any graduate. Unfortunately, at that time, it was accepted. That's just my few comments. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you much, ma'am. I, I think uh, uh, the, all the issues you mentioned, ma, are not even an uh, uh, issue for discussion. They are issues for advice, which I can assure you is being taken. Because the truth is, the aspect you mentioned us engaging, I believe that that's good advice which we will take on board. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm still uh, uh, going to be the one that will be the uh, senior special advice of the incoming president. I will put some of these things together and uh, let him know that it's part of what is expected of us as we go forward. 
I I note that. Then the aspect you also mentioned, Ma, that borders on the uh, issues of uh, task specialists, our uh, specialization in all these things. I agree with you because I remember the way in my nine years of staying in Deloitte, I never got involved in anything uh, oil and gas taxation. Okay. So it means throughout nine years when I was a task practitioner, I never had to do anything relating to that because I don't have the skill in terms of that. I have basic knowledge, okay. which you have for, in terms of that. But when it comes to the in-depth knowledge required for a practitioner, I do not have the one for oil and gas. So you focus on the area of your strengths. You don't start saying that you can do all things. You end up messing it up because your depth of knowledge may be something that is still, maybe you got it when you were preparing for exam 30 years ago. Now the thing, has, the dynamics has changed. So you need somebody who practices it day in, day out. That is what the word is, task practitioners. Okay. You practice it. And that is why you, you, are, you are knowledgeable in those areas. They are very important. The advice is taken and is noted. And I can assure you, uh, I mean, because this will be always be referred to in future. We will, all, we will take action on this as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much for um, the corroborating position to um, the comments of our mother, Mrs. Babington Ashai. Bernicke. So we have uh, Mrs. Buki Akimolado. It's interesting to have you, Mabli. Can you unmute her? She was a guest, yes, um, Mr. President. I know. Um, some uh, episodes <laughs> back. Mrs. Akimolado, the, the floor is yours, ma'am. Go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, OJ. And uh, thank you for bringing my president in this, this afternoon. Well, morning, but well, it's morning. afternoon now. And Mr. President, I want to say thank you very much for all the giant strides that you made over the last two years. Unfortunately, whatever has a beginning has an end. <laughs> but we won't forget so soon. Thank you. Uh, one of the things you introduced during your tenure is the compulsory uh, MCP, MCPD payment for every member. That's to ensure that we continuously build capacity and as you know me, I am excited usually about that. Because like you said, you can't give what you don't have. And uh, you cannot live on yesterday's knowledge today. And so that's, it's imperative that we all, as professionals, must keep improving our knowledge, you know, increasing, uh, improving knowledge on a regular basis. And so I want, I imagine, I assume that um, that's the reason we decided to add the uh, MCP fee as part of our subscription. But um, of course, not, not everybody would appreciate that. But I want us to go beyond the money itself. So it's important that we don't just pay, but we all go. And so let's see what we can do to encourage members to go. You know, after paying the subscription in the year, you also have something for everyone because not everybody would be, if I have paid and the, all the topics that are dealing with in the particular for the year is not relevant to me or when it's done, I'm unable to attend. I should be able to maybe roll it over, but not a refund, but maybe roll it over so that the next year I can attend two or three or as it relates to me. Let's see how we can uh, ensure that we are not uh, making emphasis on the payment, but emphasis is on the people being um, being properly trained. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think uh, your points uh, are well noted, but beyond even that, uh, I'm a believer that virtually all of us came into this world very, very ignorant and not knowing anything because we came as children. It is because of our growing up, a little bit of knowledge here and there, we now ended up being the work, having this effective communication. And uh, the whole essence of the whole, uh, talking about this is the knowledge. Emphasis should be on the knowledge. I agree with you on that too, because one, if it is about anybody paying 15,000, some people who are very comfortable, can decide to pay the 15,000 times uh, 50 years. 
<laughs> no, that I mean, that's the point. I think I get Mrs. Akumelado quite all right. I mean, somebody can pay 50,000 for the next 50 years. If you look at 15 times 50, it is it's not too much of uh, a, a financial body for some people to settle. Now, if you not pay 15,000 for 50 years, does that mean you have gotten the knowledge for the next 50 years? Okay. Yeah, no. It's a no-no. It's a no, yeah. So I agree with you on that, that these are areas, I mean, policies evolve and then we tend to strengthen it more because some of our members may just say that, is it not the 50,000? You, you can finish that even at a perpetual joint <laughs> or even far, far more than that. But that is not the emphasis. Then secondly, one of the points she raised, which I think I agree with her too, is that one, if we are talking about mandatory professional training program, maybe it's time for us to start actually addressing what the members need in that area. Because if a member who is not exposed to maybe companies in contacts okay. and working in the state and is not being uh, uh, trained on everything that has to do with company in contacts, he will disconnect. He or she will disconnect. So we are, and I believe the education committee has been working on that because even some specialized uh, mptp that i remember the one we did recently in acquired you mm -hmm. have more of those from the internal revenue service so the emphasis was focused on what they do in order to give them additional knowledge on so i i share your view on that and i think uh, this is these are part of the thing that even council is considering to ensure that you do not where you are coming education is supposed to be seen as a valuable gift so when you are coming and you are coming for MPTP, you should leave the MPTP better informed, more knowledgeable than the way you came. And that should be the, because it's not supposed to be an African magic thing. Okay. You should go there, acquire the knowledge, go back and be a better person. So I share, I share our sentiment in relating to that. And I think uh, it's noted. Yeah, I mean, we're addressing some of this and we will keep addressing it to make it better. Thank you, the President. Thank you for um, um, such a cooperative response. Um, Tim, can you help us scroll? Can you scroll? Let's see um, whether there are um, the written questions for the, okay, Mr. Okay, that is um, um, Dr. Adimola. Uh, that is a congratulatory message on impartial leadership publication. Um, can you still scroll? Um, then we have, um, um, I thought, okay, yeah, there is um, from Mr. Um, James Dejo Mabarinde, Ike, we are saying that our tax system needs to be aggressively addressed for improvement, I meaning it can be better than this. Um, um, someone who is asking, that is um, Noah, asking where the tax office for has been located in Moway, Moway Open State. Um, can you just go to the website of um, FIRS to see the list of offices and them also OG, Open State Internal Revenue Service, for you to see the list of them, that is there on the website. You see all the tax stations, right? So um, you have that there. Um, so um, there's one making a comment. Um, let me see if you can read that out. Okay, Mr. President, this is for you. It says, Mr. President, that is from Fatima. Fatima says, uh, um, I want to know if CIT and has ever engaged the policymakers on the issue of deploying certain taxes to specific purposes, which will mean that critical sectors like education and healthcare are consistently funded adequately. Let me read it again. Yeah. I want yeah. to ask, I want to know if CITN has ever engaged the policymakers on the issue of deploying certain taxes to specific purposes, which will mean that critical sectors like education and healthcare are consistently uh, funded are consistently funded adequately. Yes. Mr. President, what do you have to say to that? Yeah, before I even attend to this, let me start with the one that uh, Dr. Adimula, like I said, is okay. the immediate uh, past uh, chairperson of the uh, Society for Women in Transition. Okay. And uh, the one I told you that our service profile, uh, coincidentally, our tenor coincides with mine. Okay. And, um, she she's been wonderful because all the giant stride of sweet was happened during a tenor because sweets moved from uh, nine states to 21 states during a tenor so i want wow. to just appreciate wow. her too and uh, thank you for uh, that compliment now the second aspect that borders on the issue of tax system again which i think came from james yes. is this 
tax system is about the legislative framework, the administrative framework, and the policy framework. It's a continuous thing we've been, we've been addressing in terms of that. And I can assure you, as of today, the issue of what constitutes the tax system has not changed. It is now the question of the quality of the engagement and what comes out of it. Very important. Okay. Now, finally, talking about this, I can recall during the period of even the presidency of uh, one of my predecessor in office, uh, Chief Mark Anthony Dike. Okay. This, this is something that not only were we saying it, we were sending position paper. It's been done before his own tenure anyway, but it was also very emphatic because <clears throat> Chief Anthony Dike, uh, uh, MAC Dike, was not just a president of this institute. He was a former director of tax policy okay. in Federal Land Revenue Service. Okay. So he is talking from the uh, perspective of knowledge. And we were engaging some on some of these. And I can assure you, even up to now, the position has not changed. What I'm saying is not just an individual opinion. It is an institutional perspective. Because when you have issues that borders on revenue being directed at a source, you can, you can link it. And you can easily see the impact that revenue is making on that source. Okay. We've been making position paper on some, we've been talking about, and then you know we are dealing with the issue of uh, data and statistical issue. That is a challenge for us. But the little we do in terms of we know, we are making it clear that if this is addressed this way, maybe we can make better impacts in some of those areas. That is something we have been doing and engaging. Now, naturally, I want to say something at this point. CITN <clears throat> does not dance to the gallery. Okay. Our type of engagement is not the type that we start talking about engaging maybe the uh, policymakers and the on the pages of newspaper. Why? We have direct access to the okay. chairman, okay. federal land revenue. We have direct access to so many people, even the JTB. When you have direct access to organizations like that, you don't fight or you don't discuss issues on the pages of newspaper. Okay. It is only when in the course of, and some of these things because of a system of engagement do take time. And because it takes time, we have to be engaging until we get the result. The Finance Act is one of them. Okay. The Finance Act we are talking about today came as a result of continuous engagement. Okay. okay so okay. you will see that ultimately what matters most is getting the answer in terms of what we want. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, <laughs> the question someone is asking, I think that has been taken care of. Um, the question from Abdi Devi, the president has just, um, 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 you know, um, answered um, um, a substantial part of it that um, through the continuous engagement of the Institute, uh, it was part of the reason that led to the uh, enactment or the finance act in recent time, because we used to have the finance decree and all that way back before the resurgence of finance act of 2019 till date. Um, so, Mr. President, I want to go to the um, to the West African subregion and African continent on the role of CITN. We have the Wauwiti West African Union of Tax Institutes, and of course the African Tax Institute. Um, what role? Has CITM play within your two year tenure in office? Has there been any um, advancement in terms of the object clause of Wauti and African Tax Institute? Is that something you can share with us? Yes, I can. <clears throat> let, me, let me say that at the West African level, we have West African Tax Administrators Forum, which is WATAF. Okay. Meant for the admin, tax administrator. Then you have West African Union of Tax Institute, WAUTI. And the level of West African Union of Tax Institute, some of our presidents have been past presidents of WAUTI. In fact, my immediate past president is equally the immediate past president of uh, WAUTI. Now, I think she is like more or less like the past president because they've had like two, uh, the second president has taken over. Okay. Now, what is our role? And my president-elect was the honorary treasurer of the West African Union of Tax Institute. And I was honorary treasurer to myself for so many years. Our role is simple. 
the tax profession we are talking about, we are not paying lip service to it. Okay. And when we started the issue of West African Union of Tax Institute, our emphasis is on the fact that if the tax professionals are giving the room to actually make positions known, a lot of things in the West African region will be addressed in terms of governance. We believe that tax, apart from the uh, uh, meeting the revenue need and also ensuring that the business environment is conducive, is equally very important in terms of governance. Now, at the point where we started, it was only Nigeria and Ghana that have a chartered in of taxation. Okay, I've started. At the beginning, okay. our commencement. But in the course of engaging most of the francophone and even the uh, uh, one or two anglophone countries, we, we started having this engagement and it's leading to other formation of institutes. As of today, when we started, the issue of African Continental Free Trade Agreement was okay. not yet in existence. Okay. Okay. It has come and we're having conversation around that. Now, all these things will ultimately, by the time you are talking about this, the issue of taxation and fiscal policy will be on the table. Okay. And we'll be having conversation on continuous basis with those areas. Now, the second aspect of it is to say, what is impact are we making? As of today, Nigeria is the second vice president of the union. I think Ghana is currently the president. Okay. We are now interested in actually ensuring that all these issues of the regional trades okay. and the impact on the domestic uh, uh, revenue mobilization of most of these things, how does it operate in such a way that it is in the best interest of Africa, number one, and then the countries we are talking about too, because you we see the whole essence of it is that we are not meant to be doing some of this to the detriment of our domestic economy. And at the same time, we need to actually have this handshake because when it costs you, when it costs you more to get something from your neighboring uh, uh, country, mm -hmm. and then it is cheaper outside, something is wrong with our model. And all these are areas where we want to address. Because I can remember recently when I went to Arusha, Tanzania, it was an overnight thing. And the truth of the matter is what is the distance? So there are so many areas that borders on our trade relationship we need to work with among Africa. Why will the, maybe a country like Ghana, for example, prefer to sell their uh, cocoa or whatever to another country when me as a neighbor may need it I may not be able to get it as a cheaper level all these are things we are trying to address so that at the end of the day trading with each other should be a common thing in order for us to be able to get the benefit of our relationship these are all areas where even West Africa Union of Tax Institute and then the African Association of Tax Institute that is undergoing a broad conversation for now because most of the African countries does not have a tax institute. Okay, okay, okay. And you know, South Africa is also very critical to the African Association of Tax Institute, and we're in conversation with them. Okay, okay. Let's say now, uh, there's something that I want to we'll be clear. For business owners who are listening to us, people have businesses in Ghana, in Gambia, in Sierra Leone, and Botswana, Senegal, mention it. Now, uh, the question would be, the world is it just... Um, True moral situation, they want to engage government, or is there an actual framework where they can sit with the ministers of finance and economies of the different country or have an engagement with the president of this country to take firm regional decisions that can help country in the sub-region? Is it because of moral situation? If you do this, it will be nice, it will be nice. Is there no bite? So the question of Wauti. Yes, the bite is the bite is in Ecowas because the Wauti model, as you have it, all work effectively with Ecowas. Okay. So you see, when it because when you look at it in, the, in that context, it is easier with Wauti relating effectively with Ecowas, and it's not okay. only Wauti. Wataf is equally having a strong relationship with Ecowas. Okay. Uh, sweet West Africa is actually being uh, 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 supported both morally and financially by ECOWAS. So you will see that the ECOWAS uh, um, uh, involvement is giving Wauti the strength it deserves in order to get the voice 
and to get the buy-in of the West African leaders. Now, that is general. Now, on specifics, you see some of these countries, the truth of the matter is that in some of these other countries, the issue of engagement with their policymakers okay. is easier in some than in others. Okay. And uh, okay. Uh, beyond the fact that if you are talking about francophone, you have to face some fact. A francophone model has its own uh, unique peculiarities. Okay. It has its own unique peculiarity because of the France connection. And that is why you can see that the echo currency itself is not gradual, it's not even coming on stream as fast as it was being okay. conceptualized. Okay. Okay. That is something you cannot take away. It is, an, it is a colonial, uh, 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 how do I call it, uh, legacy. <laughs> so you have to take that into consideration. But with all the challenges I've identified, it is still clear that the direction we are going as YLT is to first ensure that the professionalism of taxation is known and that all the countries within the West African region, for example, accept the fact that tax professionals have a role to play in the taxation and fiscal policy uh, formulation. So these are all areas. Unfortunately for us as, as a union, we are making progress in those areas. And I can tell you as of today, it is when you talk of water, you talk of YLT, you are talking about people who are making this thing. The recent one we just had in uh, Arusha is the African Task Symposium. All these are areas to show that Africa is gradually finding its voice to say that this is what we want you to do and for you to get it right. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, let's go back to the screen. I'm sorry, asking, can our great institute um, reissue the latest version of the ethan tax laws as amended annually by the Finance Act, e.g., CETA, incorporating all amendments of Finance Act 2022. Probably talking about, um, you know, this book we have here, that can institute um, issue new ones. Uh, you, you may want to speak to that on the uh, yes. plans that are in the pipeline. Yes, uh, OJ, I won't allow you to escape easily. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, you, you have to tell them how far you've gone. <laughs> okay. Now, fortunately, I'm going to put the question. You see that when the person that is being asked question is now becoming the questionnaire, that is exhibiting the typical Nigerian character. <laughs> now, the point is that this uh, question you raised is actually under the committee, I think, Barista Chukwe Mekaezi, with my own brother here, OJ, as a member of that. I'm sure they've made significant progress, and it has to do with all these amendments today. Now, the challenge, the initial challenge, which I think would have been overtaken, is that in the course of trying to codify some of this, another one will come and then you are looking at it, okay, why don't you just wait and bring this into that context? And the truth of the matter, which is what I had in terms of private conversation, if we do not address it and bring it up to date, the most recent one is, I think, the 2020, yeah, the recent finance act, this has just been signed on the 28th of May. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if we have to be fast about it, if we fail to do this in the maybe latest by third quarter, before you know what's happening, by the first quarter of next year again, another one will come. So it is better for us to actually either address it and cut off date, and subsequent to us, we find a way of incorporating. But OJ knows better. He may give us a, an in house a, this thing. I will allow you to go in. Here. So respond <laughs> well, to that. Well, my brother, Mr. Clement, uh, 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 as the e bishop, that asked that question, yeah, the publication is in the pipeline. Um, it has incorporated uh, 2019, 2020, 2020. 2020, um, 2021, and all that. Um, so the challenge had been the rates at which new finance act add on them. So a comprehensive job has been done by that committee chaired by Barrister Shwebeka Eze and um, various, um, you know, practicing professors um, who were on that committee. My humble self was there in that committee. I am still there though. So it, uh, it's an elaborate work. It's going to come out in three massive volumes, three never before seen in the history of this country. So we are going to see it very detailed, very impactful. And from there, as the president has said, it's going to be the base for the annual um, you know, um, editorial adjustment that we made. 
So, E Bishop, um, watch out for the publication. Within the next two months, we'll have a three volume massive, never before done anywhere in Africa. You can't get that volume anywhere in Africa. So, massive job done. You'll see it when it's out, it's, it is in print, and um, a whole lot of details have been done, written from different perspectives, practitioners, academics, and then policy makers came together to put that work together. So we are sure you you get that. Mr. President, I hope I'm free. You are very free. You are more than free. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we move on. I can say on a BC Clement. Let me look at what the question is. Is it within our domain? Um okay, that was a tax pro max issue. You see that FRS headache in one way or the other, but we are going to come to if someone is coming here that is going to address all of this in subsequent um, um, episodes. So the rest are sure, Mr. IBC and Clement. Uh, which other question do we have, team, on the... Do we have any other question? Um, someone, uh, okay, Alaji, Tafik Lawa, our elder, they thank you for making yourself available to be engaged and all that. And also, uh, Mr. Polycap Madukaeze, our elder also, is also thanking you for the good job you've done and for the journey so far. Okay, so um, thank you all viewers. Um, okay, is that a question? Um, Binuyo, Binuyo was the question. Um, okay, uh, anyway, you've explained it, but you may want to buttress. Binuyo is asking that Mr. President, what effort is our institute doing to ensure that our universities or our polytechnics um, offer tangency degree? You explained it before, but we want to elaborate further in that regard. Yes. Uh, the effort we are making is the fact that one, you know, I told you we came up with this issue of uh, Association of Nigerian Past Students. Answers. That is yes. that is an initiative of CITN. And beyond that initiative, we we've been following up in terms of both at the district level. Fortunately for us, as of today, the institute is covered in uh, over thirty three states, thirty three plus uh, uh, federal capital territory. I think we have just about three states to go in terms of having district society. Okay, and wow. if you recall, I've said it before, that the Institute is deriving its strength from the strength of the district society, because we cannot be everywhere. It's just like the house fellowship model. And with this perspective, we are getting, and we are making significant progress there. But further engagement is that we are now talking about the district societies getting involved with those various uh, universities and where we have challenged uh, student affairs at the federal, um, uh, national level gets involved with them. And then the president also does his visitation on consistent basis, and which I've been doing in order to ensure that this is done. And then Professor Akitoye too, and some others are getting involved with the National Universities Commission and the other people okay. to ensure that we are eating it from all fronts. Because the whole only way we can talk about tasks as a profession that is of repute and should be respected is to ensure that most of these universities are running a BSc transition and degree related transition courses. And that is where we are. Well, thank you, Mr. President, because we are aware that um, National State University is on a BS Action program. Federal University Building KB um, running the, a PSC. University of Benin. The University of Benin. So, a whole lot. So, um, and this is also doing more in that regard. Question of to me, uh, the President has explained that on the road, the CIT has played an enactment of an abstract plan here. So, he explained you may want to um, get the recorded um, version of this um, um, the broadcast. And then hear it over. Um, so on the other side, um, so uh, on that aspect. So when we get other palm rays to we'll come to attend to it, just a quick announcement, Mr. President, for all members. The CIT and Tatras Anna meetings coming up on Wednesday, June 7. That is tomorrow, 2023. Time is 12 noon at NECA House in Ikeja, um, CBD, Alausa in Ikeja, Lagos. So our third first AGM is coming up June 7, Wednesday, 2023. Time is 12 noon. That is Nigerian Employers Consultative Association Building at um, the CBD, Akimba Logan Street. CBD allows a Keja. Time is 12 noon. So we enjoy all members to try as much as possible to um, be present in that meeting to take the report of the presidential and ESCO. 
Secondly, we are having um, to the glory of God investiture. You know, our president keep um, insinuating that is on his way out, right? We are going to be having investiture of the sixth president by the grace of God. In terms of um, barrister, some of Lucia Lagbelui, SCTI, um, is going to be invested as the sixteenth president of the Chartered Institute of Tech of Nigeria. Um, the date is Saturday, June 10, 2023. Time is 2 p.m. prompt. At Lagos Continental Hotel, Profile by Ministry Victoria Island, Lagos, June 10. And guess what? Honor him that day his birthday, June 10, the incoming president, the incoming president of CITN at Lagos Continental Hotel, Profile by Ministry Victoria Island, Lagos, 12 noon. Um, that is that on that. Let's take note of this important event and make inquiries appropriate and, and try to attend. A quick announcement on our coming up MPTP. We have the Lagos second lap MPTP titled Digitalization, Digitalization and Digital Transformation, Tools for Effective Tax Management and Compliance in Nigeria, coming up on Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. The second title same for Lagos second lap, Transfer Private Compliance in Nigeria. Transfer Private Compliance in Nigeria, Understanding Disclosure, Declaration and Documentation Obligations, also coming up on Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. Uh, we thought two hours was long, um, but from what I'm seeing here, the two hours is not going to be enough, but I'll try to manage and move on. So also for MPTP, apart from Lagos Second Lab, we also have been another MPTP on June 29th, Worry, June 29, 2023, Worry MPTP is tied, we are going to have two streams of presentation, Petroleum Industry Act 2021, the PIA, redefining Nigerian's petroleum fiscal regime. PIA 2021, redefining Nigerian's petroleum fiscal regime. And the second topic for consideration in finance acts, implication for stamp duties administration and revenue generation in Nigeria. Finance acts, implications for stamp duties administration and revenue generation in Nigeria. Um, I'm going to, we're going to want you to join strongly for all of these MPTPs, especially in the light of the recently issued um, signed into law finance 2023. Numerous addition changes, how do they impact on various areas in this area? And one of, lastly on MPTP, there's an about an MPTP coming up on Tuesday, July 4, July 4. Let's take note, later second lap, Right, it's coming up on June 20th. Then the Warrior MPTP on June 29th. Then we have Ibadan coming up on Tuesday, July 4th. We're covering two broad areas personal income tax administration and management, challenges and prospects. Personal income tax administration and management, challenges and prospects. And second title there is uh, tax investigation, triggers and mitigation strategies. Tax investigation. Triggers and mechanical strategies. So these are the announcements of our AGM coming up tomorrow, the investigation of system presidents, and the three MPT people just mentioned, Lagos Second Lab for June 20th, Warri June 29th, then July 4th for Ibadan, covering various areas. I have Mr. Dejumo up, or Molara, a ledger up. Please, one minute. You just have one minute to make a contribution or ask a question. We are running out of time. So Mr. Dejumo, over to you. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Congratulations for a successful tenure. Thank you. You parted us greatly. And to my Oga, uh, Mr. OJ. Good afternoon, Thank sir. You. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, my, my question is just briefly. I just want to know how what the institute have done so far concerning the multiple taxation that we experience in our economy multiple taxations that we are having across, especially at the local government levels. So it's really cleaning, I mean, hindering the sources of all these SME, SME businesses. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dejuma. That are being addressed in the publication we are expecting that is coming in three volumes. Okay, okay, yes, yes, it will. But Mr. will speak to that. Let us just take the questions in one single swoop so that we can wrap up because our time is getting up. Thank you, Mr. Dejuma. Let's go ahead to um, um, Mrs. Omolara. Your comment, just within 45 seconds, please, because we're out of time. Thank you. 
good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Well, good, well, job done. On you. And I congratulate you on the success of your tenure. My question Thank is you. this. I want to register for the uh, Lagos Second Lab MTP. And, and I've paid for the compulsory MPT when I was paying for my honor subscription. But, um, it's not linking. I just want to know how to do that. Thank you. Well, uh, I think I, I, I think I, we had, I was asking whether she can use the compulsory payment she has made to partake in the Lagos MPTP. The answer is a yes. It is a yes. It is a yes. It is a roving payment. It can be used for any of the MPTPs, so long as you've made your mandatory payment. Yeah, lastly, our time is up. Like I said, two hours is not enough. Mr. Lucia um, can you go ahead, please? 45 seconds, please. Thank you very much, uh, my 15th president. And the moderator, Thank you, Jesse, Thank uh, you. I want to congratulate you for a successful outing. Uh, the question I want to ask, sir, where are we on the position of uh, some of the understanding with uh, ICANN? There was a publication that came out earlier this year. And people that are very close to us are not allowing us to sleep on having concession for some of our members there. Just uh, a word so that we can take it back to that. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Kwande. I think the president has answered that. Uh, for a lot of time, yeah, you may want to replay the recording. He has um, clarified the position um, just because we're out of time. Um, pardon us. Last week, I can get the Imudia. 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds, please. First of all, contribution, please. We're out of time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, my brother. Um, the materials for all the programs for God. If you have asked me for it, I would not know how to reach out to the people that I'm sent to them. So okay, thank you. I'm going to answer that, Mr. President. All the edition episodes of CTA, CITN General, is on YouTube, right? Go there, search CITN TV. You are going to see all the recording. So they are all there. Nothing is hidden, everything is there. Uh, even including this, every one of them can access. Yes, go to YouTube, type CITN, all the discussions, all the recordings, they are all there for you to play back, play back and then um, assess. So, Mr. President, so um, just two things from what I've asked the multiple taxation briefly, right? Um, and I think that was the um, issue. Um, the others have been addressed in the, in the context of discussion. Okay, fine. Let me start with the aspect of uh, multiple taxation. Uh, fortunately, your president is also a member of the Joint Task Board. We are, we are a member of the Joint Task Board. And the issue of this issue of uh, multiple taxation, in part, not even just in that, uh, in the context in which you're even talking about it. We have this issue of even parks, the motor parks and the so many regulatory okay. issues. We, we took time. And we wanted to talk about study in order to harmonize this to something that is manageable. Because the ease of doing business is affected when people don't, cannot even define what taxes am I meant to pay from local government to local government. That was one of the challenges of JTB. Now, the second aspect has to do with even getting all the states. You know, we are talking about every government is a government on its own, whether you call it state, local, or federal. That is the type of constitution we run. So as much as possible, where you now have a challenge that borders on this, you need buy in. You need to even get to know what are those ones you can even take in as a, whether it is a, uh, the agro related one or the state related <laughs> one. You want to get the facts. And you must move from the fat in order to talk about what is the ideal. So all these are areas that we have been doing continuous study on. Now, it is not, it is not just about CIT. Let me put it this way. Anybody who wants a sanitized environment, we want a situation where our tax system runs in a way that is in the best interest of everybody. And we want to operate in a place where I can at least be sure that I'm not going to be finding myself in trouble because of one tax issue or the other as a result of multiplicity of taxes. So these are areas we are yeah. trying to address. Finally, from uh, uh, that of uh, Sheso Kwade, okay, okay. The, I will try to just give him just the answer he needs there. Okay. The 
understanding we already had is still in place. People can come directly to CITN and get clarification on that and make the payment on the basis of that understanding. I can assure you. And I believe that the registration executive will tell the person what needs to be done. It is, if we have not gone back from that understanding, we have an MOU, and as people of integrity, we operate on the basis of that MOU. Thank you, my president. Uh, our time is almost up. The president, lastly, and this for us, what do you have to say on CHN Tajina and you and to the crew behind that are looking at us from the other side? Yes. See, I, you see, the, the, I believe in corporate communication, and that was the first thing that led to CITN transition and you. It is an avenue. You can see the level of question. Tomorrow, even if we say it's five hours, people will not uh, uh, leave this. And we get a lot of understanding from CITN transition and you by virtue of that uh, engagement. So please stay tuned to this and keep watching it. It's a, it's a program worth uh, engaging in. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for being present in this 11th edition. It's symbolic as you sign off your presidency in the next few hours. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for, um, in conjunction with your council, conceptualizing this idea and um, the Institute owning it. Thank you for coming. I want to thank everyone of us out there, the production crew, the cameraman. And uh, so are we doing that on stage? Okay, team, can you come over? Yeah, let the old one see us. Let the old one see us. Those are behind it. Uh -huh. Let the world see us. Um, there are so many people behind there. You only seen two of us here. Is a whole family, a whole family. Can you please come on board? Uh, yes. Let's take care. Let the whole world see us. Share it from Atlanta to Georgia to Greece to Europe to <laughs> Madrid and Barcelona. That's my yeah. people. Yeah. So, um, yeah. camera, can you come on board? That's a wonderful. So, this guy, the massive, uh, you know, resource person, the director, the deputy registrar. The, uh, just there, you can see all of us. So can we wave to those at home? Thank you as a yeah. sign out the team president. Thank Bye you. Bye-bye. <laughs> see you in the third edition. Bye. <laughs>